Hillary Clinton's remarks tap into public anxieties about socialism, leadership, and national security, while drawing on an emotionally charged critique of Donald Trump. Her rhetoric seems designed to provoke, playing on fears and anger rather than engaging in a substantive debate. This style of discourse highlights the deepening divisions in American society, where political dialogue is less about policy and more about personal attack. So to what extent do you offer counsel or do you speak with Kamala Harris mm-hmm. about how to run against Donald Trump, yeah. who, as you've said, is a different candidate now, a darker candidate, right. arguably, than he was in 2016? That's absolutely true, Willie. You know, I've talked with Kamala uh, a few times. I obviously talked with her before the debate um, because he is um, more incoherent. Uh, he is angrier. He is lashing out all the time at everybody. He's filled with grievance uh, and rage. Uh, and, you know, in my acceptance speech at the convention way back in 2016, I, I said, you know, you, you can't trust uh, somebody with nuclear weapons who you can bait with a tweet. Because I saw that in him at the time. A lot of people didn't or they gave him the benefit of the doubt um, or they thought, hey, you know, we've had two terms of a Democrat, let's try the Republicans for whatever reason. I understand that. But now the stakes are even higher because he has a record. We have seen him try to abuse power. We have seen him try to overturn a legitimate, free, fair election. We have watched him bungle COVID and cause unnecessary deaths and and pain. So he has a record. And in addition to that, he's told us what he's going to do. He is absolutely linked to this Project 2025 and all of their dark and dystopian efforts to turn the clock back on Americans' rights and the way we live and how we, you know, look at our futures together. And he has a long uh, rhetorical record now of making it very clear that he would be unaccountable if he were ever near the White House again. Madam Secretary, as you just said, there's so much at stake and there's proof as to what is at stake. So uh, those who believe in our democracy would consider this an all hands on deck moment. Right. Um, Clinton's description of Trump as filled with grace and rage can be seen as an attempt to deflect emotional accountability by focusing on Trump's perceived emotional instability. She steers the conversation away from meaningful policy discussions and into the realm of personal criticism. This approach plays into a broader strategy of demonizing opponents, using emotionally loaded language like rage and gravity to stoke fear and doubt about Trump's leadership without addressing his policies or record in any substantive way. By relying on this kind of emotional rhetoric, Clinton contributes to a political climate that thrives on satire and hyperbole rather than grounded debate. Her remarks, particularly her claims that Trump has abused power or represents dark and dystopian benefits through Project 2025, lean heavily into apocalyptic language designed to alarm. Such tactics, often seen as exaggerated or manipulative, aim to provoke emotional responses instead of fostering a genuine dialogue about Trump's actions or the implications of Project 2025. This approach risks alienating voters who seek objective discussions based on policy outcomes, not fear-based narratives. Clinton's comments can be viewed as a reflection of how political elites often shape the conversation to maintain control, crafting narratives that portray figures like Trump as threats to the status quo. This feeds into a broader distrust of the political establishment, especially among conservatives who prioritize individual responsibility over institutional control. For many, Clinton's rhetoric reinforces the perception that the political elite and mainstream media are biased against outsiders like Trump, deepening the divide between ordinary Americans and those in power. Rather than fostering fairness and open debate, her focus on emotionally charged language may only serve to polarize the electorate further.